your desires are boring, or rather, they should be. I want to talk about normalizing your desires. So this is kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky concept, I think, for us humans. Because we want what we want, and we're excited about it, like inherently. When you perceive yourself not having something, when you think about the thing that you want, that you feel you don't have, it's like, ooh. Well, it could be ooh, or it could be ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So either we have this nervous excitement because we're thinking about getting what we want, or we have resistance really is the right word. We have resistance surrounding the idea of, of lack, of not having what we want. And they're both not ideal for manifesting. You might have heard this one before. So this is you. This is your desire. The more you want, the more you yearn. You increase the distance between you and your desire. You increase the time and the distance. And that never gets shorter until you stop wanting, stop yearning. Let me rephrase this. It's not about never wanting anything. That's kind of, that's a bit Buddhist, isn't it? And it's like, there's nothing, like I get, I get where they're coming from. Absolutely correct in my opinion. But it's not about not wanting. It's about removing the nervous, resistant charge connected with your desire. I can say with absolute certainty and confidence that every time I've manifested something in my life, it has been from a place of indifference, from calm. So, want what you want, but normalize what you want. Let it become whatever. Boring, if you like. It has to feel normal. And I know what some of you might be thinking. Some of you might be thinking, oh man, that sounds lame. <laughs> because then it means I can never want anything. I can never be excited about anything. I know, I know that feeling. But that's not quite how it plays out. In my experience, what happens is you want something and then you're able to let it go. Be cool with it, be cool without it. It doesn't matter. You're completely indifferent to the way this plays out. Then you forget about it. You stop trying, you stop worrying, and then a day later, a week later, a month later, maybe even depending on you know, like your own belief system, your identity, your view of yourself, and how possible you think your desire is, it might be a year or, or several years later, that feels like a topic for another video. But when it happens, you'll be like, oh shit, I manifested that, it happened. It kind of sneaks up on you when you're least expecting it, but that doesn't cheapen the experience. It doesn't lessen the value of it. In this past week alone, I've manifested two items that I wanted, but weren't desperate for. You know, I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. I've kind of gotten itching for, I'll just tell you what one of them is. It was a guitar. I was, I was kind of itching for a specific style of guitar. And I was looking at, at options, essentially. I was window shopping online. I'm like, oh, what's available? What can I buy? What's within my budget? And um, <laughs> I was like, I was gearing up to, to maybe buy it. I wasn't fully committed, but I'm like, okay, I think that's the one that I want. And it'll be this much. 
cool. Um, then I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> uh, stopped worrying about it, stopped thinking about it. I let it go. I didn't stop wanting it. I just kind of, I guess, resigned myself to the fact that, uh, whatever, I don't need it right now. It's not necessary. It's something I want. I don't, it, it's not going to ruin my life if I don't get it, right? It's very much in that vibration, if we want to use that term. And it must have been a week, a week past. <laughs> and this exact, this specific type of guitar I wanted kind of slapped me in the face. I just bumped into this situation where it was available to me at less than half the price that I was willing to spend. <laughs> right? So that's how it works. And, I, and I, I bet, I bet that many of you watching this have had that exact experience. I feel like it's really easy to have with material things. You know, like I want to buy this. Ah, forget about it, whatever. And then it'll go on like huge sale out of nowhere. You know, like I, I feel like a lot of you can relate to that. So we know that that works. We just need to apply it to like everything else in our lives. Think about relationships. How many times have you wanted someone and the more you want them, the more you try, the more you chase, the further away they get. We know, we know this happens. This is, this is a situation that we have accepted. This is like standard dating advice, you know? Don't try too hard, don't be desperate. It works for everything. That's a clue for how the universe works. Resistance, desperation, these are manifestation killers. All right, so where's the practical advice? I know like I, I get I get hung up on this as well because there's like lots of videos online talking about basic principles like princi principles are good principles are where it's at and they're far more important than techniques but it is nice to have some some practical ideas too so you want what you want and like I said before and I'm sure you've heard this before you have to be good either way you have to be good if you get it. You have to be good if you never get it. You have to accept that life will be fine and you will be happy if you never get it. But that doesn't mean you stop wanting it. It becomes like, a, oh yeah, that'd be nice. I'd enjoy that. But my life isn't gonna be over if I don't get it. So a quick side note. It could be difficult to apply this to something that you feel is really important. So let's let's say uh, let's say you're broke and you're in debt and you really need money quick. I'm not saying you can't do it, but that feels like maybe not the best place to start practicing this. <laughs> you know, start with something small, prove you can do it, and then take that feeling, the feeling, and apply it to something bigger and like keep working up. Just like going to the gym, right? Start small and you work your way up. Okay, so you want, you want what you want. Get yourself to a place where it doesn't matter either way if you get it or not. And sometimes this can work kind of in the opposite. Like let's take money again. Money's so good for using as examples, um, <laughs> which is probably why everyone talks about money in these videos. So if you want a certain amount of money and it doesn't feel like you deserve that much or it doesn't feel like you could ever get that much. It works the same way. So you'll stop yourself from getting it. You still have that resistance, that desperation, you know? Like if you want, if you say, I'm gonna manifest uh, 10 bucks, whatever, it's 10 bucks, who cares? Chances are you'll walk out your door and you'll find 10 bucks just on the street. <laughs> but if you're like, I want a million dollars, you're probably not gonna find a million dollars on the street because you're not used to that amount of money, right? So you have to be good with it or without it. Either way, it's, it's equally important. 
and then like, you know, forget about it, let it go. It's none of your business how you get it. And that doesn't mean that you lounge around and do nothing, but the opportunity will present itself. If the work needs to be done, the work will be done, but you let it go. So how do we explain like people who hustle and grind and still get what they want, you know? Because it can, it can be easy to, to, to think, well, you know, if, we, if people get what they want just by working within the physical, then is there really any validity to this whole manifestation thing? Yeah, I am of the, the opinion very strongly that people who hustle are manifesting the long way around. It's not the hard work that's getting them there. The hard work is slowly, I repeat, slowly training them to, to want in the right way, to believe that they can have it. Because think about it, the more you work at something, you know, you're gonna get to a point where it's like, well, shit, man, I put so much work in, it's about time. You know, it's easier to believe that you can get something if you work at it, as opposed to if you don't. So it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. All right, so want what you want. Be good with it, be good without it. Let it go, forget about it. Work on something else. Work on a, uh, on a different desire. Work on a hobby, on another project. Or this is, this is something I'm playing around with at the moment. Work on a contingency plan, maybe. As long as it's not, oh, that's never gonna happen, so I'll do this instead. It's like, all right, that's on the back burner. Let this big desire percolate. And in the meantime, I'll like work on this. And then let me know what happens. Like, let a week go by, let a month go by, and see if that, that thing shows up anyway, sneakily through the back door. But you have to be patient. That's the thing, right? So, so many of us, we're like, oh, I want it. Just, I need it now. It becomes a need. And that need increases the time, increases the distance between us and our desire. All right. As always, take what resonates, discard the rest. <laughs>